receive it, your anointing diminishes with it. So we want to remain anointed. We want to be anointed for the job, anointed for the task, anointed to pray for our families. This is what we're talking about today. Hallelujah. We're speaking and talking about being anointed. Hallelujah. And we want you to be anointed. And we're going to be looking in the book of Samuel chapter number 10. And we're going to just give you what the Most High has given us. We just like to give you something so that you can have something to feast on during your day when you're going about doing about. It's good when you can have something to feast on. The word, the, the scripture tells us that the word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And is it is a discerner of the intents of your heart. So the word will give you the capability of looking down in your heart and to come up with ways and ideas where you can remain persistent. In this life that we're living, we're talking about anointing. Our focus scripture comes from 1 Samuel chapter number 10 and verse 1. It says, Samuel took a veil of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, It is not, is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? So uh, the, the Most High empowered Samuel to anoint. Saul, as uh, king, you have to be anointed. And what, what we want to talk about as far as being anointed, that's a, that's a job that uh, you have to be qualified to do. And when you anoint it, let me talk about it being anointed, the way that they used to anoint those in, in the times of, of this day and this hour that we're talking about, when they would go down and anoint an individual, they would take the oil and they would pour the oil on the individual. They would saturate that person with that oil. You, you know the scripture that says how beautiful and how pleasant it is uh, for brethren to dwell in unity. It's like the, uh, the, the oil that flows from the head of Aaron to his beard, even to the skirts of his garment. So uh, the, when you are anointed, you are, are given a task to do. And when they anointed you back in the day, it was a, a, a sloppy and you had oil all over your face. You had oil all over your 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 clothes, you had all that even flowed all the way down to the skirts of your garment. Hallelujah. So it went from your head all the way down to your feet. So what we have to understand is we need to be saturated in our desire to live for the most high. We need to be saturated so much so until we're consumed with it. That way that we anoint people today, you know, we anoint them with a little dab of oil on their head. But the way that they anointed people, they, they poured it on them. Hallelujah. They just poured all that oil all over you. So Samuel took a veil of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him, talking about Saul, and said, is it not? Because the Lord have anointed thee to be captain over his peoples, over his inheritance. So we are anointed today, people of the Most High. We are anointed to bring unto the world this powerful gospel that the Most High has given us. To pour it on the people. And when we look at the process of being anointed, even when you take the oil, that you use to anoint uh, the people with. What does it take to get the, the oil from the olive? It has to be crushed. You've got to crush that olive so much so until it, it draws the oil out of that olive. So when you crush that olive, the, 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 the fiber that is left is really no good to really do much with but the oil, the properties of the oil, 
is what is being used. So when you are anointed, you are crushed. When you have gone through all type of problems, when you have gone through all type of trouble, you are being processed to be anointed. So many times life will crush you down. Life will, 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 will seem like it's hard pressed upon you. Even the people of the Most High, we have been crushed. We have been crushed for a reason and for a purpose. No one, nobody in this earth have been mutilated and, and done the way that we have been done. Why? Because we have been anointed to be the ones that will reign with Christ. We have been anointed to be the ones that will, will judge the world. Hallelujah. So that's what the scripture said. It says Samuel took a veil of oil. He didn't just tell, wet it with his finger and place it on his head, but he poured it. He took a veil of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord have anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? So you are being anointed for a reason, sisters and brothers. You are going through what you're going through for a reason. Your family is, is at stake. Your children are at stake. Your life is at stake. We have much that, that is needed for us to be able to stand in this stead. Hallelujah. All right, let's continue on because we, we got a little ground to cover. All right, verse number two says, When thou art deported from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin and Zelsa. And they shall say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek are found. And lo, thy father have left the care of the asses and sorroweth for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? So, as we talked about on yesterday, Saul even said himself, We better hurry up and get back to my father before he stopped worrying about the asses and start worrying about me. So he was already prophesying. So we see here that uh, now he has been anointed for the task. He has been anointed to prophesy. Many of us that are on this channel today, whether you know it or not, by you being persistent, by you constantly coming in, you have been morally anointed than you were before. Because when you come in the realm of the presence of the Most High through prayer, I don't care what you feel like. It's not according to your feeling. It will come upon you at any given time. The power of your prayers. Don't think that it's just something that just you just did. But there is a power. There is an anointing that has been accumulated through your faithfulness of coming before the Most High. You cannot come into his presence over and over again. And it does not have effect upon your life. Oh, yes, that's, this is why there is a force that is trying to keep you from coming into his presence, trying to keep you from kneeling down or sitting down or what, whatever formation that you're in. There is a force that tries to keep you from doing that because it is valuable. The anointing is valuable. If you've noticed the price of anointing oil, it has gone up. Even just, just physical oil that you purchase. It's going up. It's expensive. Hallelujah. So what you're doing today, sisters and brothers, is expensive and it's valuable. So never underestimate the time that you spend in prayer. The time that you spend in his word is just building up your anointing. You're going to be able to speak to people without even trying. You're going to be prophesying in your conversation. To people because this is the hour that we're living in. This is a time where uh, he's seeking such that he can use, that he can speak through, that he can influence others through. And you're the one. Hallelujah. All right. So let's continue on. Verse number three says, Then thou shalt go forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall uh, meet thee three men. Going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. So these three men, don't, back in those days, uh, people were more dedicated than they are today. Uh, you're among the people of this generation and this day 
that are the, the anointed people, those that, that are persistent in prayer, you're like the foundation of what the, the Most High wants to do in the earth. You are the ones that are holding up uh, this world and sustaining this world through prayer so that others can be channeled into salvation. This is why you have, have got this burden on your life. It's to come before him and to enter in to prayer on a continual basis. And not only for the world, but for yourself. It's for, for your divine protection that your spirit might be protected, that others that are connected to you might be protected. So what you're doing is a desire of the Most High. This is what this is like the communion that he had with Adam when he would meet Adam in the cool of the day. This is the same type of, of communion that we're having when we come before the Most High and he meets with us. Whether you know it or not, he's here meeting with us. He has a recording secretary taking down the names of those that, that are making sacrifice and listening to your prayers and honoring your prayers and blessing those whose names that you're calling out in prayer. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? If you believe that, somebody put amen in the comment section because this is exactly what is happening. He is blessing those around you that is connected to you. You cannot spend time with the Most High and not be affected. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's move forward. All right, he's going to see these three men. And these three men are going to deal with him. All right, verse number four says, And they will salute thee, and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hand. Look at this prophecy that's going forth by the man of God. Telling him, you're going to see three men. They're going to be going. They're going to be holy men. They're going to be going up to the temple to offer prayer. They're going to have sacrifices. And not only that, they're going to give you something. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give him some praise up in here. Oh, I just love when the anointing of the Most High comes in the room. They're going to give you something. People are going to start offering you things. People are going to notice. They're going to see the aura of the anointing on your life. You cannot be in the presence of the Most High and it, you not be changed. They may not say anything, but they're going to be looking at you because they see something different. They see that aura of anointing that you've been in the presence of the Most High. They're going to see it on your life. So when they saw him, they said, they're going to give you two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hand. Don't refuse it. When people want to, to uh, be a blessing to you, never refuse the blessing that people want to render into your life. That's the hand of God giving approval, sharing and giving the approval on your life. Hallelujah. All right, let's continue. Verse number five says, After that thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is a garrison of the Philistine? And it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place, and the sorcery, and the tabret, and the pipe, and the harp before them, and they shall prophesy. So let's take a look at this verse a little closer today. It says, after that, in verse number five, after that thou shalt come to the heel of God, where is the garrison of Philistine? Philistines were their enemy. But during the life of, of, of Samuel, he caused the Philistine to be at rest. They, they, the Most High caused them to have peace among the Philistines because of the life of Samuel. Back them down so he can walk right by the garrison. The garrison was a, a type of group of men, uh, army men, that would gather together. It didn't phase him one bit. He walked straight by them. You have no business being afraid when you're driving by the police like we used to be back in the day. And when we was doing wrong, when we seen the police, we ducking down, straightened up, trying to act like ain't, ain't nothing going on because we knew that we was wrong. 
and start praying, had nerve enough to pray because you was dirty, riding in the car. Lord, don't let them stop me. Hallelujah. But now you can drive by the police. You ain't got to worry about ducking down and all of that. You look over at them and keep on driving. Hallelujah. So they came by the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a sorcery and a timbre and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. So people of God, the spirit of prophecy is going to move upon those of us that put ourselves in the way. You don't have to call yourself a prophet. You know, we got everybody that's got a big name, big title on their name. We're not trying to be that. We just want to be what we have been destined to be by the power of the Most High. Verse number six says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. Prayer is going to turn you into another individual. Prayer is going to turn you into another person. It's going to give you the power that you need. It's going to give you the force that you need. It's going to give you the boldness that you need. You're going to be turned into another individual. If you keep praying, if you keep seeking his faith, you're going to become that person that you aspire to be. You're going to be restored to all those things. You know how many times we say, Woo, I remember the time we were so on fire for the Lord. Well, you're going to turn back into that individual if you, if you stay in prayer. Your family's going to start changing. They're going to start honoring you even more because of your presence in the, in the face of the Most High. Verse number 7 says, And let it be when these signs are come upon thee, unto thee, that thou shalt do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. So in other words, when, when you start living like this, and when you get anointed and get close to him, it's going to become habitual. It's going to come. It's going to take the place of the bad habits that's in your life. You know, sometimes people have bad habits. Why come, you know, you, you don't fault them. You, you got a bad habit. You get through eating. Oh, I got to go smoke me a cigarette. That's not nothing good. Why you got to have a cigarette after you finish eating? Just, okay, look, give, give me my cigarette so I can eat, uh, smoke my cigarette. And it's got on, on the package that it can cause hazardous to your, hazardous to your health. They ought to just put a skull and crossbones on there with a skeleton head with, and it's poison. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Verse number seven. And let it be when the signs are come unto thee, that thou do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. So he's with you, sisters and brothers. He's with you in the hour of prayer. He's with you. He's with your family because he's with you. So let us continue to seek his face. Verse number 8. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and sacrifices, sacrifice sacrifices of peace offering. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. So we got to continue in the ways of righteousness. Tarry means to wait. Tarry means to constantly be seeking his face. In the formality of, of prayer and praise. Hallelujah. We, you're not just sitting idle while you're tearing, but you you have your mindset focused on the Most High while you're waiting on Him. You're waiting in the act of praise. That's what it means to tarry. All right, let's continue. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. So this is what we want. We want another heart. We want our heart to be more fresh toward the Most High. We want to be like David. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew within me a right spirit. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And please don't take your spirit away from me. So this is what we want. We want to have a new heart. We want to be made fresh. We want to be made uh, into that individual that the Lord is dependent upon. He needs someone in the earth 
that is crying out to him for this wicked world. And sister, sisters and brothers, let me tell you, it's you. You're the ones that he's dependent upon. You have proven yourself that you are the one. You are the intercessors of the earth. You're the intercessors of your family. You are the one that ought to stand in the gap and to call upon the most high. Hallelujah, because he is there for you. All right, let's continue on. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. So the Spirit of prophesying will come upon you. That doesn't mean that uh, you got to put on no long robe and a big tall hat on your head and walking around stiff-necked. No, it's not talking about that. It's going to give you the right kind of spirit. You're going to be more spiritual for yourself, not for others. We're not trying to prove anything to anybody. This is for you. This is to put you in a mindset where you can be comfortable in your service unto the Most High, where you can be more satisfied. You know, many times in your walk, you become dissatisfied because your anointing is not as strong as you would like it to be. Sometimes you get fall in those predicaments where you can't even hardly pray. You get down to pray and you up in two, three minutes. Well, you want that, that spirit to be changed in you where it's not a problem for you. You want to live a life of prayer where you're just going through and you, and prayer just, bam, pop up. You just start praying just like in conversation. You're just talking to the Lord because you're already in his presence. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Verse number 11. And it came to pass when, when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, What is this that has come unto the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? You know, sometimes people, they would try to say, oh, You just think you so much. You think you so whole. No, it ain't that. You just trying to live a life that's satisfactory to your soul. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to, we're trying to get in that position and in that place where, where we feel satisfied with our walk. Because when you become uh, complacent, uh, you, be, you become like Peter when he was following the Lord of for all. The, he's way up there and you looking and following. No, you want to be right there with him. You want to have that anointing ready and accessible because at any given time you may have to call upon the name of the Most High. All right, let's continue. Verse number 12 says, And one of these, and, and one of the same place answered and said, But who is their father? Therefore it came, uh, became a proverb, Is Saul also among the prophets? Is he a prophet too? Saul been called to the ministry. Well, not necessarily the people. That's what the problem is with people today. Everybody want to be something. You just got anointed all of a sudden. Now you want you you want to become an apostle now. You got all kind of folk. Apostle this, apostle that. We're not trying to do that. We just want to be used of the Father in the kingdom. Because when you get in these positions, uh, the, the responsibility just becomes so heavy on you and a lot of people cannot handle. They done took on things that they can't even handle. It's too heavy for them. So just stay meek for the master's use. That's all he want us to be. He want us to be one that he can call on, one that can see the situation and go into prayer and change lives and change situation. Hallelujah, through your prayer line. All right, verse number 13. And when he had made an end of prophesying, he came to the high place. And Saul's uncle said unto him and to his servant, Whither went ye? And he said to seek the asses. And when he saw that there was, were nowhere, he came to Samuel. Hallelujah. So we got to know where to go. We got to know how to, to be able to rectify the problems that are in our life. Some of us have lost things. Well, he wants to restore them to your life. Some of us have, have, have lost our desire and we want it back. Well, welcome back. He's getting ready to restore you. All right, verse number uh, 15. And Saul's uncle said, Tell me, I pray thee, 
what Samuel said unto you. And he said unto his uncle, he told us plainly that the asses were found. But of the matter of the kingdom whereof Samuel spake, he told him not. And Samuel called the people together unto the Lord of Mitzvah, and said unto the children of Israel, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt, and delivered you out of the hands of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all kingdoms, and of the them that oppress you. Let me call this to your attention, people of the Most High. The, the Most High... Yah always calls it to our attention what he have done for us and our forefathers. He said unto uh, the children of Israel, Thus said the Lord God of Israel. He already prophesied. He have been changed to another man. He is now speaking the words of the Most High. And he said unto the children of Israel, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt and delivered you out of the hands of the Egyptian and out of the hand of the kingdoms of them that oppress you. This is what he is doing for us right now. And you are a special remnant. If my people, which are called by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray, you are a special portion of the remnant that he's using in this last hour, even while the world is going into chaos, even while we haven't closed calls with China. We don't know when somebody's going to fly off at the handle and, and go into battle. And they're already trying to send uh, troops back over into the east, in the areas, Afghanistan or uh, Iraq and all these places, trying to send folks over back into those positions. So we got to continue to pray. Oh, let's continue. And ye have this day rejected your God who himself saved you out of the your adversaries and your tribulations. And ye have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us. Now therefore present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousand. Hallelujah. Samuel is talking some heavy talk. And when Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was taken. And when he caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their families, the fire tribe, the family of Matri was taken. And Saul, the son of Kish, was taken. And when they sought him, he could not be found. Hallelujah. Therefore they inquired of the Lord further. If the man should yet come thither, and the Lord answered, Behold, he hath hid himself among the stuff. So sometime when, when the most high began to move, you know, people start hiding, people start getting out the way. Hallelujah. But we want to get in the way of the most high. We want him to, to, to shower on us. Let your anointing be upon us. Let's continue. Verse number 23 says, And they ran and fetched him thence. And when he stood among the people, he was higher than any of the people from the shoulders and upwards. So he was a tall and statue individual. You know, sometimes people that's tall, they, they always get the attention. The, the shorter people don't get the attention like the taller people. So the Lord uh, knew what kind of king they wanted. So they, he gave them something that they wanted. Sometimes what you want is always not good for you. Your desires, you have to make sure that your desires are in alignment with the will of the Most High. Oh, let's come on in for a landing. All right, verse number 24. And Samuel said to all the people, See ye him whom the Lord hath chosen, that there is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted and said, God save the king. And Samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom, and he wrote it, wrote it in a book and laid it up before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away and every man to his house. And Saul also went home to Gilbert. And there went him with a band of men whose hearts 
God had touched. So when you're coming into the midst of prayer, I want you to know that uh, the Most High has touched your heart. <clears throat> he is doing something for you. you. You're not the same as you were uh, before uh, we came into this realm of prayer. You have been changed. You you have been made better. You have been made more sensitive to the spirit and the move of God. Your desire has become more intense for the things of the Most High. You want it to stay that way. You don't want to lose ground with him, but you want to, to gain ground. You want that fire to keep burning. You want to stay anointed uh, in the face of the Most High. This is the purpose of what we're coming together for, is to make us better, to make us more sensitive to the move. So when the Most High speak to us, that we'll be more ready to hear, more ready to act, more ready to do and to perform his perfect will. Hallelujah. Verse number 27. But the children of Belial said, How shall this man save us? And they despised him and brought no presents, but he held his peace. So when we see, you're going to always have people that don't like for us to come into the, the rim and come up into the reckoning of the Most High, and they want to always be contrary. You got some people that when they see somebody praying, it disturbs their spirit. Well, that person needs to examine their spirit and see what is going on when you don't want to be in the presence of the Most High. So you're going to always have the children of Belial that's going to be on the sideline, the, the child of Satan or the man of the flesh that's going to be upset with you when, because you're trying to get close to the Most High. But don't let that disturb your spirit. You stay focused. Stay persistent in your prayer life. Don't let anybody pull you down. You're doing a good work, and you can't come down from what the Most High have called you to do. So, my sisters and brothers, stay anointed. The Most High have anointed you. Yes, I'm saying it. You are anointed. You cannot be in his presence consistently without the anointing resting upon your life. Hallelujah. Saul was anointed, and he began to speak those things that the Lord was capable of doing in his life and in the life of, of others. But the, the question is, are you going to stay anointed? We're going to talk about that in our next uh, lesson in our next next prayer session, we're going to look a little deeper into Saul's life. All right, family, we're so happy today for you all joining in with us. You are so blessed and favored that the Most High has given you a new heart. He is transferring your old heart of flesh. Hallelujah. He's giving you a heart of, of flesh rather than a heart of stone. He is melting your ways into his way. He's grooming you to be more anointed, more usable for the kingdom. All right, sisters and brothers, we thank you so much. Those of you that may be new to this channel, as usual, we want to encourage you to please subscribe to this channel. We have lost considerable subscribers since we've been praying, but I feel that it's a shakedown going on. So he's trying to make this channel more of a channel of those that are more likely to be used of the Spirit. So we want to encourage those of you, share this channel with those that you know that love to pray. We're not trying to get anybody that don't like praying if you know somebody that has a prayer life or a prayer partner in your life share this channel with them and help them to be able to help their families as they join in with us in prayer and also sisters and brothers if you find it in your heart uh sow a seed into this channel so that we can continue to do the will and the works of the father yes that's right we're going to challenge you to make this a habitual thing that you will sow into the kingdom. That we might be able to continue to do the will of the Father. 
especially those of you that have never sown a seed, we want you to consider being a consistent supporter of this ministry. All right, sisters and brothers, that's all we have today. And we're honoring the Most High. We're thanking Him for all that He is doing. And whether you know it or not, you are a positive influence in your household and in your family. So let us continue to pray. Let's continue to seek His face and stay before Him in prayer. All right, <clears throat> that's all we have for you today. We're going to say peace and blessings to you and your household. Shalom.